Today I'm going to talk about the process that we're going to follow for project number three, which is the color pencil rendering uh, from the photograph, from the still life that you picked out in my reference photos. Then I want to get into the techniques for applying the marker. Uh, we're going to use that as an underpainting for the colored pencil application that will go on top of that. So it's a mixed media project with uh, markers as the base. I called it the Grisset underpainting. Uh, it's very much like an oil painting. Um, it's going to start with uh, all gray tones uh, on gray paper with the markers and then we're going to apply the colored pencil over the top. That'll be in a separate video. This one will just be some tips on applying the markers, getting the values right, and uh, getting it ready for that colored pencil application which is to follow. So I'm pretty much set up, ready to go with my marker value rendering. I've got my drawing transferred to Canson paper. I covered that in the previous PDF. Uh, I've got my value scale. I'm using these Blick markers because I ran out of my Prismacolor markers, so I had these handy. So I've got a 20, 40, 60, 80, and black. Okay, so I've got my value scale here. I've got it ready to go right on top of my reference. Um, I trim the edge as I suggested that you do so that you could put your piece of paper, your Canson paper with the values on it right on top here or on your screen in front of you, whichever you're using. And that should make it a lot easier to decide what values to go with. Now, um, just like in my PDF, I suggest maybe starting with this really dark background first. I'm going to go with a 80%. I'm going to build up some black in here. Um, I'll, I'll go in right up against the edges and uh, I've never used these blicks before. They have their thin tip is actually a brush tip. So, you know, I'm, I could use that. I could also come in with the edge here, which is a little bit finer. This is the fat tip, but it has a little bit more of a thin edge. So the idea is that I want to get right up to the edge of my still life subject matter and outline it. So I finished outlining pretty much the, uh, the background, the background elements that I can come in now and finish off this lighter background, the lightest of the two values I'm going to use, this is 80%, so I suggested in the PDF that you always start with the lightest value that's in any particular area. So, so I'm going to go around this whole background now and do the same thing, coming right up to the edge where I outlined, and that's working out pretty well. So I'm taking my 80%, I'm taking some black off of it. And what it'll do is, it'll put that black down for a few strokes, and then it'll kind of revert back to the 80%. And if there's any areas that still look a little uneven and too strong, too blotchy, I can always come back in with a 60% and go over it. So the idea is, bring some of that black down in softly and then you can come in and bring it in stronger. I'm seeing the black up in the corners, the darkest values are up in the corners more and the lighter ones are down towards the objects. I want to talk about a, a tough area uh, to work on and that's a flower, very light flower. So um, according to my reference and my value scale it doesn't go much beyond 40%, maybe a little 40 and blending some 60 into here. I do want the values to be there before I do the color. So I'm going to start with the areas that are in cast shadow. Define 
find that shadow first. This is two, this is 20%, so this is my lightest value. And the rest of these areas, the petals that are lit, I'm just gonna leave them paper surface. And that's what I suggested to, to for you to do, is if it's gonna be lighter and brighter than the gray of the paper, then just leave it alone. Okay, so there's my cast shadow. to find the form a little bit better. Okay. Yeah. That's better. Okay. There's a little shadow over here. I'm just going to be really subtle with it. Using just little streaks of gray. Probably use streaks of colored pencil over that. Let's go into the areas that are a little bit easier to work with, and that's these petals that are in shadow. So I'm going to work on those. This is my lightest value. I'll put my lightest value everywhere that's in shadow and come back. Before we leave the flower, one more thing you can think about is now that we've got the defined petals, we can come in with the 20% if you want to kind of knock everything back or you want to uh, blend everything together, then you can just scrub it everywhere. Everywhere except, of course, where the light's hitting it. And that'll kind of tie everything together. And that's just the two. Again, that's, that's my lightest value. Okay. Now I'm going to concentrate on this floor area right here. And um, I'm not even going to worry about two. I checked my value scale and with the photograph. And the lightest value that's in there is 40%. So I'm going to start with 40. And again, I'm going to outline with 40. And then I'll come in with 60 in some of these darker areas. So to outline the 40, I'm coming in with the sharp tip right up against the edge. So I've outlined um, all of the area of the floor around the objects. Now I'm going to come in with a fat tip and circular strokes again to uh, land each stroke in before it dries. Okay, 40% is done on the floor. Now I'm going to come in with 60. I've already got the 40 up against the edges, so it's not like I'm not going to be careful with it, but it's a lot simpler to come in now with my 60. So I finished the floor, and um, I found myself doing a lot of streaking and a lot of blending to get that feel of reflection and shiny wood. And maybe even a little bit of wood grain, which I'm really going to go for with the pencil. So bringing some of that value into the glass is important. So I'm finding that this tip, this is a 40%, this tip is, is great for just coming in and painting what I see in my reference. At least for this first layer, which is going to be 40%. So there's a lot to build up in here. I'm going to build that up with 40%, and then I'm going to come in with 60%. I did actually use a little bit of 80 here, here, so I'll probably use some of that 80, maybe blend it in, in a couple of areas in here, too. But it's great for just painting what I see, these, these shiny reflections inside the glass. So I'll be doing that for a little while. And then, through the magic of video, I came up with this. So this is obviously the finished value. I showed you this one in the PDF presentation. This is the one that I'm going to work on for color, with color. And um, I'll spend more time, individual time, going into some of these areas and talking about 
the application of color. Um, you've already done quite a lot with markers. You've seen a, a few things that I've done with this one to build up some value. So finish it to this point, to the point where your values are done, and use this value scale on your reference so that you can figure out those values and apply it to here. Okay? So good luck. Get that value rendering done, finished with markers, and you'll be ready for colored pencil, the fun part, the best part.